At 839, David Stokes from the Show Me Institute is here for his weekly visit on the McGraw Show. Good morning, David. Good morning, Paul. Good to see you again. David uh, brought with him this morning a copy of a new case study that he has written about government privatization in Missouri, about opportunities that have been squandered, opportunities that have been successful, and other opportunities that haven't even been tried yet. Uh, I teased ahead of time that you want to privatize everything, and you kind of smirked when I said that, <laughs> but that is the truth, right? Well, it, short of public safety, then I think there's a lot of opportunities for privatization in a lot of areas. Things such as police should, of course, never be privatized and never are. The one thing that I'm opposed to privatizing that sometimes is in other states is jails and prisons. I think that's a, a mistake and not a proper use of of the private sector. I agree with you. Privatizing jails and prisons means in order to have those companies continue to make money, you got to keep arresting and jailing more people. And we have far too many people in jail in America right now. Well, I completely agree with you. And the problem with prison privatization is that the incentives that make privatization work in all these other fields break down at that one, as you just explained. I can't can't say it better than that. So it's outside of public safety and fire departments and we're we shouldn't privatize fire departments in I think we should reform our fire services in Missouri but privatization isn't a part of that okay so what would come under the heading of things that should be done by private enterprise that are now being done in the public sector well there's there's a lot I think recreation management which is to say not to nobody wants to sell the parks but to manage the city pools the municipal golf courses the tennis courts that are within those parks oftentimes that can be outsourced to companies that specialize in running golf courses. And that's sort of the the lead story in one of the op-eds that accompanies this, is that for people who have been golfing in Forest Park for a long time, I don't think anybody would say that the golf course was better back when the city ran it before it was privatized in the late 1980s. It is so much better now and got better rather rapidly after they outsourced it. They didn't sell it, of course. They, They outsourced it. And there are just many examples like that. Let me, just stop, let me just stop you on the golf thing. I'm not a golfer, so I'm curious about this. What made it so much better? Did it become more efficient? Did they serve the customers better? How, how did it get better? Well, I think all of these, all of those ways, I think the people you would recognize is that the private company in an interest to, to make money, now that they're paying rent to the city to operate this golf course each year, they want to make money. So they put private investment into the course itself and just the quality of the course got better rather rapidly. The, the holes became tougher. The course became better maintained. Did the cost go up for the golfers? The cost went up, but only slightly. I mean, if you took it what the city was charging back in the 1980s versus what you're paying now, sure, it's more, but after adjusting for inflation and like, it's not a lot more. Okay. The average golfer can still afford to play at Forest Park Golf Course, and they're getting an overall experience that is much, much better than it used to be. And, right. I've, and I played both... When I was a teenager, I would play the old city run course, and I'd play regularly at the new one now. So, All right, give me examples of other things that are run now by government that should be run, in your estimation, by the private sector. A lot of cities are starting to use, to look into privatizing animal control. And there's been some very successful examples out in Jackson County and Chillicothe. This paper discusses examples from throughout Missouri, not just the St. Louis area. And that's an excellent opportunity to privatize via the nonprofit sector. Not all of this privatization has to be with a for-profit company. There's plenty of roles for nonprofits in it. And in there's cities and counties that have pr- contracted with the Humane Society or other local animal rights organizations to run their shelters and have done this very successfully throughout Missouri. All right. If it's not a money-making enterprise, explain to me what the money flow is there. Is it similar to what it is now where... You and I pay taxes, the government collects it, and then the government passes it off to this outside party, and then they do it. And if so, why do we even need that outside party? It sounds like you're adding that extra step. Well, oftentimes that outside party can do it for less money than the government was spending. I mean, if that nonprofit can come in and do it for $400,000 a year when the city was spending $500,000 a year in animal control, then you've saved taxpayers $100,000. Yes, some of these deals, like utilities, which I think cities should auction off to the private sector if they have a municipal utility, that becomes a for-profit enterprise. But there are plenty, like animal control and others, where it's more about reducing the level of tax dollars involved while improving services at the same time. What happens to the people who work for those organizations that do that? When you privatize, for instance, animal control, 
do people who were full-time government employees previously now become full-time private sector employees? Or does that private sector enterprise that takes over say, okay, well, we still want to make money, so we're going to cut revenue, and that means cutting people? Oftentimes, when you privatize to a for-profit company, be it a utility or fleet management or other, or other things, that company comes in and says, look, we want to keep the expertise that you have for the people who are doing this. So oftentimes they do hire the people who were in the public sector now to the private sector. But they generally have, the private sector generally has less employees than the public sector. So sure, you're going to lay off a small number of people. Oftentimes the laid off employees are, are then switched to other areas of government service. It's very rare that they're just outright fired, although that does happen sometimes. Does that mean that once they're no longer uh, in the government services, uh, if they move over to the private sector, that they lose all the benefits that they may have accrued as government employees? And I'm thinking particularly about pensions. Well, that would be negotiated on a case-by-case basis with the privatization. I think in many times it would. But if a government wanted to privatize a service and wanted to protect its public employees, it can make things like that a part of the contract. Now that, if you're selling up, auctioning off something to the private sector, if you put in things like that, you're going to get less money as part of the deal. So it's everything's a trade-off there. Is there any municipality in America where the government doesn't do anything except safety? Oh, yes. And it's we talk about it briefly in the paper. Our, the paper's focused on Missouri, and there are no examples in Missouri like that. But Sandy Springs, Georgia, is a suburb of Atlanta where they have basically privatized everything. They're a new city. They really came into being about a dozen years ago, and they contracted with CH2M Hill, the, the engineering company, to, management, to manage basically everything, uh, inspections, uh, permitting, uh, basically everything you could do short of police and fire, they contract out. And they've, as time went on, they stopped contracting with just one company and found they could get a better deal if they broke the contracts up and put it out to bid, which is so important. Whether you do privatization a lot or very rarely, the open bidding process needs to be regularly done every five years or so to put these deals out for bid and to be tightly monitored by the government Because you need competition times. to keep costs down, right? Absolutely. Without the private sector having some risk, they're not going to bring the efficiencies to make money that brings gains in the first place. And without them being held liable for any mistakes that they made, you haven't done the taxpayers any benefit. You need to consistently, first of all, you need to enforce the contracts strongly and carefully. Second of all, you need to put them out for bid regularly to, in order to bring in the new ideas from, from new competition. Are there... Um, people who have tried this or municipalities that have tried this and said, eh, after a couple of years, eh, this was the wrong thing to do. You know, like in Missouri, I can't find really a spectacular failure. I, in Atlanta, not Sandy Springs, but a few decades ago, Atlanta privatized its water division, and they didn't properly prepare for it, and the private partner didn't properly prepare for it, and that was that didn't go well at all. And Atlanta suppose, uh, also has some problems with snow removal recently. Right, right. Is, is that private? <laughs> I think that's public in most cases. <laughs> Judging by who was on the TV and apologizing for it was was more politicians <laughs> and not the CEOs of the snow removal companies. I've never seen a city of that size brought to its knees by two inches of snow like that thing, that debacle a couple of weeks ago. Uh, all, all right, so let's get back to Missouri. Where are there places in this state where maybe they haven't done everything in the municipality uh, by moving it to the private sector, but they've had success in taking one element or another. You know, I would hold up the city of St. Louis as having done some excellent privatization efforts, particularly in Forest Park, where not only is the golf course outsourced and very well managed by the private company, but Steinberg Ice Rink is managed by a private company that pays rent to the city and then makes money off of the ice rink each year. And I love going to Steinberg Ice Rink. I think it's terrifically well done. The Boathouse Restaurant is done by a private contract that pays rent to the city and then operates this excellent facility in, in the park. The Muni Opera is, of course, an example of a, of a nonprofit that does performs a, use services within the park. So I think St. Louis City does an excellent job, and I think Clayton is also an example of a city <coughs> that is at least, while it hasn't privatized a lot of its recreation management, at least it carefully considers it with each time. 
And they they recently outsourced the running of their tennis center in Clayton. And I know you're a tennis player, mm-hmm. player Paul. They they contracted with the the Frontenac Tennis Club to manage the C- Clayton City tennis courts. And I understand that's working very well. They haven't done that with their pool or ice rink, but at least they always consider it and run the numbers and try and see what works for them. If this is such a good idea, why hasn't it been done yet? Well, there's a lot of public sector opposition for obvious reasons whenever it is tried. But, but we found that when it works best, it's not about ideology. And this is not just what we found. We report this in the study. But a lot of people who've looked at it, economists say, you know, it doesn't really work because you come in, you have a private sector belief, and, and you have to force it down people's throats. Mm-hmm. It works best when it's really done pragmatically. When you come in and say, here's a service that might not be a core function of government, such as running a golf course. It's not something that government absolutely has to do, like maintaining the roads, doing the, doing the local roads. I do think you can privatize highways and bridges through a tolling. But like police and fire, that's what governments need to focus on. So when you pragmatically look at other things, such as animal control or golf courses or swimming pools or running your city's fleet, running all the city cars, which can be done privately, and you approach it pragmatically, I think you can address a lot of people's concerns. David Stokes from the Show Me Institute. His new report is called Government Privatization in Missouri, Successes, Risks, and Opportunities. Where can people take a look at this? They can find the, the report at showmeinstitute.org, and we also have a Show Me Sunshine a page that accompanies it, which has a lot of transparency with some examples of privatized contracts for people who might be interested in it. And we also have an interview with a local mayor uh, about the question of privatization in, in his city. David Stokes, a regular contributor to McGraw in the Morning. Good to see you. Thank you, Paul. It's 8.50 at the Big 550 KT.